Hi folks, my name is Andrew Mail. I'm the lead developer for Lighthammer FX. Lighthammer is a new AAA studio in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We've been around for a little over a year and are working on our new game called Codename Runner. Uh, Runner is a combination FPS and tower defense game that will pit you against other players throughout the world in what is called the World Runners League. We're hard at work on Runner, but it's going to be at least another two to three years before we'll finally be able to show off what we've been accomplishing. Um, on a personal level, I've been programming for almost 20 years, and I am entirely self-taught. Some of my friends asked me to do a down and dirty tutorial on the basics for using Blender's game engine, so this will be my attempt at doing just that. Um, if you don't already have it installed, um, you can visit blender.org. Uh, to download the latest version of Blender. I am using version 2.62. It should be it should be pretty much functionally identical to any 2.6 version. Uh, there may be some differences with older versions so if you are using an older version and something I do does not appear on your screen that more than likely is the cause but feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, with that out of the way well, I guess we can just get started. Um, Blender Game Engine, it's its a great tool for getting into game development. You're not going to make a, a Gears of War or a Mass Effect with Blender, but you can certainly learn the key concepts that are involved with modeling, programming, level design, etc., etc. All of those things that go into the general um, idea of game development. Um, so it, it's a good place to learn, and it's probably best to leave it at that. As you can see, I do already have Blender open on my computer. Um, if you open yours and you have a cube in the screen, just make sure that it's selected by using the right mouse click. Whenever you select things, they'll change so that they become highlighted with orange. Make sure that the cube is selected, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and then the enter key on the keyboard. And that kind of gets everyone on the same slate because some people don't have that to start. Um, and now that we're there, I guess the first thing we really need to do is we need to switch off of this view and this mode into the game engine one. Now, the way that this is at the moment, this is essentially made for the modelers more than anything else. So you want to click over here for the screen layout. You want to change that to game logic. And you want to change the engine to use. You want to change that to Blender game. So now that we've done this, this is sort of a personal preference thing, but I like to go in and change the way that my panels are set up. I'll set this one over here to be properties. I'll click and drag with that to the right. It gets rid of that one. I'll resize here, resize here, and that gives me the space that I need. Um, now, of course, just basic stuff. If you're rotating, you use your middle mouse button. If you want to zoom in and out, use your mouse wheel. I honestly don't know what you would do without the mouse. I'm sure there's key combos for it with the keyboard though. So, yeah, you can go to blender.org and find those. Um, anyways, let's see here. So we've got our panels and everything set up the way that we like. Um, probably the next thing is let's just go ahead and start adding stuff to our scene so that we can begin building our logic. Go ahead and hit Shift A on your keyboard and you'll get the Add menu. We're going to add a plane. We're going to hit S to scale it. We're going to move it out there pretty big. And we'll go over here, here, and right click, rename floor. You'll notice that I do renaming a lot. That is, that is sort of a self-preservation thing. Um, as you get into larger and larger games that you play around with in Blender, if you don't have everything named, it's going to say plane 001 through plane 162. And that's going to become really difficult to track which one you're actually looking at. So name your things as best as you can, and you'll make your life a lot easier. Um, so, okay, so we have our plane and we've called it our floor. The next thing I want to do is I want to add my player, which I'm just going to use a cube for that. Keep in mind we are doing prototyping here. So just use your imagination. I believe the phrase is willing suspension of disbelief. 
I think that's it. Rename that to player. So now we have our player, we have our floor, and uh, technically, if I hit P on the keyboard, I have a game. Now, of course, I can't do anything in the game, and that's somewhat problematic. So let's hit escape and get out of that. And let's go ahead and do some quick tidying up here for the physics engine. Now, while I still have my player selected, I want to go over here and see that this last little tab is for physics. By default, it has static physics. We don't want that. For our player, we want them to have dynamic physics. You'll see it automatically checks actor. Actor is kind of the way of telling the engine that this object may have things act upon it or may act upon other things. It's pretty important. Um, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to say we want to make sure there's a collision box on this. This way, if it enters the same space as another object, it won't just go straight through it. It will actually collide. So let's make sure that we have everything set up for the floor. The floor doesn't need dynamic, but it does need to be an actor. So let's give it an actor, let's give it a collision bounds, and let's go back to our player. So, now we've done all this, and of course, nothing new seems to happen. However, if I move this guy up, he will actually fall down. So, we do have something new happening here. Um, but it would be much nicer if we could actually make him move, say, by using our keyboard. So let's actually do that. The core of the Blender game engine is actually these logic blocks. Um, you can use bl logic blocks and you can use Python to script various things within the engine. But I'm only going to cover the logic blocks in this tutorial. If you would like another one that actually goes over the scripting, there are plenty available on the internet. I won't waste my time with them for now. But logic blocks are pretty much exactly what you would think. If I go in here, there's a block that does something here, a block that does something there, and a block that does something there. Now, what they all do, we have three types. We have sensors, we have controllers, we have actuators. Sensors detect whether or not something is happening, be it a key press, a mouse movement, or collision, or anything of the sort controllers determine whether or not that line, that sensor signal, needs to be sent on to the actuator, and actuators perform an action to an object or objects or whatever inside of the world. So, if we want to actually make it so that your character, our player, moves when you hit the W key, I'll use WASD since that's pretty common, I'm going to want to add a keyboard sensor and again, name everything. I'll hit the W key here. I'll collapse that. I'm just going to go straight over here to Actuator, select Motion. And you'll notice blue, green, and red correspond down here to Z, Y, and X. Since we want to pretend that this direction is forward and backward, I want to make Y receive my motion. Now before I do that, um, one kind of important thing for all of this, go ahead and add the maximum velocity for your player object. This keeps it from happening, this keeps from happening the situation where you hold down the W key and it constantly applies force to the point where you just keep accelerating and accelerating and accelerating. Next thing you know you're flying off into the middle of space. It's no good. It's, well. It might be good. I guess it depends on your game. But if that is what your game is, don't do what we're doing here and set this to 5. Seems good. So now, in my y-axis, I want to apply a positive force to move forward. It doesn't really matter what I set this to, because that maximum velocity won't allow me to go any faster than that. Rename this to forward motion. And then just click here and drag across. You see it adds the controller for you automatically. This is basically saying if keyboard and, and nothing else are true, do this action. And since it will be when we press the key, 
I now have movement. Which is pretty awesome. That wasn't difficult. Now, you did kind of notice I am I'm going to hold down my key and let it go. It sort of keeps moving for a little bit. This is just an oddity with the way that the Blender physics engine goes. Don't worry about it too much. It's not a huge deal. Um, if you want something more exact, Blender is probably not the best place for you to be. The physics engine is adequate, but it, like I said, you're not going to be making a Gears of War with this engine. You will make prototypes for some very cool games, and you will have a lot of fun with it. But Gears of War, you will not make. Anyways. So we have our forward. We probably want to make sure we get backward, too, of course, because, well, what use is forward if you can't go backward? So we'll make our S key. We'll add our motion actuator. And if you remember, we did 100 positive in the Y axis. Well, now I want to do the opposite of that. So I'm going to say negative 100. Backward motion, collapse, collapse, draw to connect, collapse, and now forward, backward, wonderful. I can of course keep going here, let's do a key. key. We'll do left right on the x axis, the red, so positive would be right movement and negative would be left, so left motion. Negative 100. Oops. And right motion. Positive 100. Collapse. Hey. There we go. And now, if I hit P, forward, backward, left, right. And you can make them dance just a little bit. Now, this is all kind of fun and uh, I think you could see how you would uh, handle jumping and everything as well. Let's kind of add something here that is a little bit more complex than that. Um, let's rename this to be Scene Start. And let's add a new one. We'll call it Scene End. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and add our plane, scale it. Let's add, let's actually add a sphere for this one. I'll have him up there. Now we're also going to need to add two things that were already in there. Um, we're going to need to add a lamp and a camera. And the reason for that is because if we don't add those things, when what we're about to do is set up, we will have some issues with our view. So um, another keyboard shortcut that will probably be important for you, if you hit zero on your numpad, you will switch to camera view. Make sure that's on Blender game. Now of course I want to change the rotation in that axis. And if I hit P, Okay, so select my sphere, go to physics, let's do dynamic, and let's make sure our plane is an actor, and bam. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to our start scene, and let's move over here. Let's add a cylinder. Let's add a 
big cylinder. There we go. And the cylinder is nice, but we're going to need to add something else to it just to make sure that we have all the information we need. Um, these properties over here are very useful. I'm going to call this my portal, and I'll name it up here as well. So this is my portal now. Um, the portal needs to be dynamic. It should probably be really heavy, and it should probably have a collision. Now, you'll notice when I hit collision box, it creates a box that kind of sits around the cylinder. It's not really useful. That's why they have all these different things here. So now we sort of have a more sensible collision model for the cylinder. So, okay, now we have a portal. What we want to do is we want to make it so that when you touch that portal, you are taken to the other level. So let's actually do a collision one. Call it Portal Collide. And since we gave that the property portal, it doesn't really matter what that property is, but if I look for it now when I do my collision sensor, that is a good way for me to determine that I've collided with that object. So now I'm going to add my actuator and I want to use a scene actuator because I'm going to set the scene to scene end. Collapse, draw to connect, collapse. So, I still have all my motion. When I do this, I am in the other scene. So that's pretty much it. Um, those are the absolute basics of using logic blocks. Um, they're very much not complex, but they can become very crowded, and you can get some very interesting connections between them. Um, it it is a fun system, but it does take a little bit of time. Um, like I said before, you can go to blender.org. There's tons of information on how to learn to do the various things. Um, everything from the Python to the logic blocks to even the modeling if you want. Um, there are lots of communities there for Blender. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, I hope this has been helpful in some way, though, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. See you guys.